Coming up on Network Africa. Cote d'Ivoire's former president, Laurent Babo, is released to Belgium after his acquittal last month by the International Criminal Court. Zimbabwe's main opposition leader, Nelson Tumisa, says he will boycott a summit called by President Emerson Mnangagwa. And the United Nations marked the International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation. Welcome to the program. I'm Teniola Shuboeli. Cote d'Ivoire's former president, Laurent Babo, has been released after his acquittal by the International Criminal Court. An ICC spokesperson said Mr. Babo is now on a conditional release in Belgium pending a possible appeal. He is the first former head of state to stand trial at the ICC. Last week, Belgium agreed to host the former president after the charges against him were dropped. The former leader was charged with crimes against humanity following a disputed 2010 election that left 3,000 people dead and 500,000 displaced. The violence in Cote d'Ivoire, the world's biggest cocoa producer, came after Mr. Babo refused to accept that he had lost a disputed election runoff to President Alassane Ouattara in 2010. The five months of violence that followed is described as some of the most brutal clashes the country has ever seen. Meanwhile, scores of women have taken to the streets of Abidjan to demonstrate against a decision by the International Criminal Court to free former Cote d'Ivoire President Laurent Babo. Many of these women lost family members during the 2010 to 2011 violence that surrounded the country's elections. About 3,000 people were killed. An outpouring of grief in Abidjan as hundreds of women demonstrate in the streets of Abobo in the northern region of the capital. This same place was where seven women were killed at the height of Cote d'Ivoire's post-election crisis of 2010. These women are against the release of former Ivorian president, Laurent Gbagbo. We don't want Gbagbo. We don't want Legood. The ICC needs to do what it needs to do in order to sort this out. Babo killed us and our children, our husbands and women too. I lost my daughter. She was killed by Babo right here. Mr. Babo was conditionally set free last week after the International Criminal Court acquitted him of war crimes and Belgium has agreed to take him in. The conditions set out in the written judgment are imposed on Mr. Babo and Mr. Blake Goudet upon their release to a state willing to accept them on its territory and willing and able to enforce the conditions. The court is adjourned. Violence broke out after President Alassane Ouattara won the presidential elections in November 2010, but Mr. Babo refused to hand over power, using the army to crush dissenting voices. He ruled the country from 2000 to 2011. His acquittal has been criticized by groups representing those who died in the election violence. And for these women, the news is devastating. Many fear he may one day return to Ivory Coast and revive the hostilities of the past. Senegal's former president, Abdoulaye Wade, has called for this month's elections in the country to be cancelled over fears they could lead to instability. Mr. Wade lives in France but is due to return to Senegal this week and is calling for peaceful protest. The 92-year-old is a fierce critic of President Macky Sall, who is, a, who is seeking a second term. His son, Karim, was barred from standing because of a previous corruption conviction. The former mayor of Dakar, Khalifa Sall, who had been also viewed as a strong contender in the election, was jailed for fraud last year. The governing party denies that their trials were politically motivated. <laughs> 
Zimbabwe's main opposition leader, Nelson Chimisa, says he will boycott a summit called by President Emerson Minangagwa. Earlier, the president invited opposition leaders to a meeting to draw up terms for a national dialogue. This follows a brutal crackdown on anti-government protests last month. The meeting set for later today will be the first meeting between Minangagwa and the opposition since it took power from Robert Mugabe in November 2017. On Tuesday, a nationwide strike by public sector teachers for better pay got off to a patchy start as some stayed at home while others attended school but did not teach amid fears of further intimidation. The president hiked fuel costs by 150 percent last month and immediately traveled abroad triggering unrest that drew a violent response from security forces. An Egyptian parliamentary committee has approved a proposed constitutional amendment which would allow President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to stay in power until 2034. The approval is the first step needed to move forward with the changes which is expected to be finally endorsed by parliament and then move to a referendum within a few months. The proposed amendments were submitted on Sunday to the Speaker of Parliament who heads the committee that approved the changes. The amendments include an extension of the presidential term to six years from four and a transitional clause that would reset the clock, potentially allowing him to stay in power until 2034. Any changes need approved by the two-thirds of parliament members, followed by a referendum. A court in South Africa has released anti-corruption whistleblower Angelo Agrizi on bail following his earlier arrest on corruption allegations. He has been ordered to surrender his passport. Four of his co-accused were also released on bail. Mr. Agrizi, a former chief operations officer of Busasa, recently blew the lid on the alleged corruption at a judge-led investigation. The company, now rebranded African Global Group, has won lucrative catering, facilities management and security contracts at various government institutions. The Central African Republic has signed a peace deal with 14 armed groups following two weeks of talks in the Sudanese capital, Khartoum. The peace deal was announced by the African Union, but the terms were not immediately released. The country has been rocked by violence since 2013, when mainly Muslim Selaka rebels outed then-president Francois Bozizé, prompting retaliation from mostly Christian militias. Thousands of people have died because of the unrest. A 12,000-strong UN peacekeeping mission deployed since 2014 has struggled to restore order to the countryside where the government has little or no control. The government and rebels have expressed hope over the deal. However, lasting peace is not guaranteed because similar agreements in 2014, 2015 and 2017 all broke down.